Hi, hello Peter's crew. I do hope you had a great Easter break and enjoyed your Easter egg hunt. I hope you got lots of chocolate and I hope you're not feeling too poorly after eating all of it. Welcome back to Peter's crew. We are going to look at some of the stories in Matthew's Gospel. The main church is looking at Matthew 24 and 25 at the moment and we will also look at some of the stories in that part of Matthew. But today we're going to start with a little story at the end of Matthew 17. I was really struck by this story the other day when we were doing Palm Sunday and Jesus sent his followers ahead to find the donkey that he knew would be there. It reminded me of today's story and how Jesus knew where there would be a miraculous provision and I thought it would be a good one to do at the moment. Anyway, before we do that, quiz answers. So, the quiz in Easter, I haven't got a winner because I've been on a holiday, um, I'm making this video ahead of my holiday, but by the time you see this video I was on holiday last week so I haven't got anybody's answers, I don't know if there was a winner, but the answers in case you did it at home were Owl egg was the type of egg in Isaiah. Ostrich egg was the type of egg in Job. Partridge eggs were mentioned in Jeremiah. And vipers, which is a snake, their eggs got a mention in that last quote, Isaiah 59. So if you did the quiz at home, I hope those were the answers that you found. This week's quiz is all about coins. You'll see why when you see the story we're doing. So, most of the coins mentioned in the New Testament are silver coins, okay? Except for one coin that gets a mention. So the first quote, the question is, what type of coin is this? And the other quotes that I want you to look up and find out how many, how many silver coins are mentioned in the other quotes, okay? So the answers today will be a type of coin and then some numbers for how many silver coins that you find in the other quotes, okay? Here are the quotes, enjoy the Bible quiz if that's your thing and do send me the answers because next week I'll be able to announce the winner. Now this week unfortunately there's no scent to Claire because I'm filming this before my holiday and so I can't, I don't know what's been sent to me because I've been on holiday. I say been on holiday, I've just not been making videos, I'll still be at home like the rest of you but I hope to get in the garden. Um, but before we think about today's story I wanted to think about following rules. I don't know how you are about following rules. At the moment, we've all got to follow a lot of rules that are quite different. Rules not to go out, except for exercise, um, not to go to school, um, and things like that. So I'm sure that there have been some new rules in your house, perhaps, that aren't normally there. We've got a few new rules in our house, like please get dressed before you eat your breakfast. Not all of my boys are managing that one. In fact, one of them's not really managing to get dressed before he eats his lunch, but um, hey, we're working on that. But maybe you've got other rules. Um, only two Weetabix, got a bit of a ration on Weetabix, um, after someone was caught eating four Weetabix for breakfast. So yes, I don't know what rules you've got in your house to get you through this time, but there are rules. And rules are a funny thing. Um, sometimes it can feel quite difficult to follow a rule. Um, and you have to follow it out of respect for the person that made up the rule. Trusting that they have more wisdom than you and that that rule is to keep you safe or to make the food go all the way around like the Weetabix rule. Um, and Jesus found himself in today's story in a position where there were rules to obey and he obeyed them in a very unusual way. And in doing that, he showed two things. He showed humility at obeying the rules and he showed a great, well, his great power, his great amazing miraculous power. It's in Matthew chapter 17 and it's from verse 24. Jesus talks about paying tax. Jesus and his followers went to Capernaum. There some men came to Peter. They were the men who collected the temple tax. And they asked, does your teacher pay temple tax? Peter answered, yes, Jesus pays the tax. And Peter went into the house where Jesus was. Before Peter could speak, Jesus said to him, the kings on earth collect different kind of taxes, but who are the people who pay the taxes? 
Are they the king's children? Or do others pay the taxes? What do you think? Peter answered, other people pay the taxes. And Jesus said to Peter, then the children of the king don't have to pay taxes. But we don't want to make the tax collectors angry. So go to the lake and fish. After you catch the first fish, open its mouth. And inside the mouth, you will find a coin. Take that coin and give it to the tax collector, for that will pay the tax for you and for me. Wow, what a way to pay taxes. Miraculous fishing. So let's just unpick that a little bit. So this temple tax then was a strange sort of tax. The Romans had um, put that tax in place for people to have to pay. Um, and so everyone had to pay so much tax to the temple, but really it was going to the Romans who were occupying the land at that time. And so it wasn't a very um, a liked tax. It wasn't the thing that people wanted to pay. It was not a good rule. Well, it's probably a good rule for the Romans, but um, it felt like an unjust rule for the others. So that's one thing. However, if Jesus didn't pay it, he was going to get everybody into trouble. But what's Jesus going on about with this bit about kings? Let me just read that bit again. So first thing to notice is that before Peter spoke to Jesus, Jesus knew what he was going to talk about. So I love that way that here again, Jesus knows in advance what's going to happen. And I think that's really important for us at the moment in this time with the virus where we don't know what's going to happen, but Jesus does. And he has a plan and we have to cling on to that. So anyway, back to the story. Peter went into the house where Jesus was. Before Peter could speak, Jesus said, so listen to what he said, the kings on earth collect different kinds of taxes, but who are the people who pay the taxes? Are they the king's children? Or do others pay the taxes? What do you think? And Peter answered, other people pay the taxes. So there, Jesus was talking about kings, and I think he was talking about the king in heaven, God, the Father. And he was saying, look, even on earth, the children of the king don't have to pay the tax. So I'm the child of the king in heaven, so why do I have to pay the tax? I think that's kind of what he's saying to Peter. However, he goes on to say, the children of the king do not have to pay the tax. So he's underlining, I'm the child of the king. But... We don't want to make the tax collectors angry. So he's aware that sometimes you have to be humble and you have to pay the tax or you have to follow the rule, even if it's not a rule of, of your own king. But you have to do it in a humble way because it's important. But he needs to find the money, but Jesus knows where the money is. And this amazing thing. So go to the lake and fish. After you catch the first fish, Open its mouth and inside the mouth you will find a coin. Take the coin and give that to the tax collector. It will pay the tax for you and me. So Jesus comes up with a miraculous and amazing way to pay the tax. Just like he knew exactly where the donkey would be that he needed to travel into Jerusalem on. And I thought that was an amazing story. It reminds us that Jesus knows what's needed and he knows where to find it. Now... I don't know if you've ever been fishing. I mean, just catching a fish, I find miraculous enough and the beauty of the fish. I've never caught a big enough fish that I could have opened its mouth and found anything inside. But imagine Peter's surprise. He was a fisherman used to catching fish, but I don't think he was used to catching taxes. So we have a God who can do amazing miracles. And I just loved the randomness of that miracle I was thinking, what can we do with that story for this week's craft challenge? And I thought it was such an unusual story. And this, you know, we might try and do something in a different way. You don't have to do these, by the way. You don't have to do them. But if you wanted to, I think we can have a bit of fun with this. It's kind of a news report. Can you imagine the news report? You know, man pays taxes after finding coin in fish. Da, 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 da. So maybe you could produce a little news snippet of video I'm imagining that you are reporting on this story for the local television. OK, 
okay? Think about it, you know, tax collector gets his Jews from Jesus, um, you know, maybe talk about what the people thought, what Peter thought, what the tax collector thought, you know, was the coin still smelly from the fish? I don't know. So maybe you could create a little newscast report of this story, the amazing way in which Jesus paid his tax. Anyway, it's over to you. And it's okay if you don't want to do it, but I thought a craft could be a dramatic craft and you could send me a little news snippet or video snippet. And next time, if you sent any, we'll have a little look at those. So I thought it might be nice to have some um, worship. So here we go with our Creator God. this week I came across this little idea and I thought it was quite a good one so we are going to do some prayers for the coronavirus situation and for ourselves based on a pack of cards because I thought that might be something you all had at home so it might be a good way to focus your prayers you could maybe do this as a family um, so let's have a think so every time we see a heart card turned over so any of the ones that we get king of hearts um, we are going to pray for our hearts. We're going to pray for our own hearts to be humble and to be loving like Jesus' heart. So that's quite important at this time so that we can get together as a family and follow each other's rules and not fall out. So whenever we see a heart card, turn over a heart card, we're going to pray for our hearts to be humble and to be loving like Jesus' heart. Right, diamonds. If we turn over a diamond, we're going to pray 
for those people who are in power or authority over us. So that's everybody from like the Prime Minister and the government all the way down to people in charge of hospitals, um, people in charge of our homes, our parents, um, people in charge of the shops and the food, um, anybody who's in power at the moment who has authority and power. The kind of person we might need to pay tax to, I suppose, but we're praying for them to have wisdom at this time and to carry the responsibility of whatever it is they have to do well at this time. So diamonds, praying for people in power. Hearts, do you remember? Praying for our own hearts, to be humble and loving like Jesus is. What's next? Spades. So whenever we see spades, spades are like for digging. So we're gonna pray for people who are working at this time. Now, a lot of people I know are working from home, but this is kind of praying for people who are working out there on the front line. So these are people in our hospitals, our NHS, the doctors and nurses who have to go to work every day and risk getting the virus. They are for uh, transport people, the bus drivers, the train drivers, um, food, all the people that get food in supermarkets, um, the pharmacists. I don't know, I probably missed people. But anybody who's working at this time, um, we're going to pray for them. And we might want to include in those prayers people who, um, who can't work and who are a bit worried about money and stuff because they can't work. So all to do with work when we see spades. And oh! good. Clubs, the last one. Queen of clubs here. So whenever we turn over a club card, we're going to pray for the power of Jesus to be seen at this time, because a club is like a weapon, a powerful weapon. And we're going to pray for Jesus's power. It's also got like a cross in it, like Jesus. It's quite cool there. We're going to pray for Jesus's power to be seen in this time, um, in whatever way that needs to be. Right, so... You can do that at home, but I'm just going to have a go as an example, okay? So let us pray. Clubs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus and his power, his amazing, miraculous power to heal, to bind coins in fish, many things. Please, Lord, may his power be seen at this time. May people be healed. May people be comforted. May we see his power in the world. Amen. Diamonds. Father God, we pray for those in power and authority. We pray for our Prime Minister and the government making difficult decisions to keep us safe. Please give them wisdom. We pray for our head teachers. We pray for our parents. Help them to make wise decisions and help us to follow those decisions and stick to them. Bring wisdom, Lord. Amen. Well, that's diamonds again. I'm just going to cheat. Okay. Hearts. Heavenly Father, we pray for our own hearts at this time. We pray that we can be more like Jesus every day. Give us humble hearts that follow the rules. Give us loving and kind and compassionate hearts. And through being like Jesus every day, may our homes be places of love, joy and peace at this time. Amen. So I need a spade. Oh, we're all right, I've got a spade. Queen of spades. So Heavenly Father, we lift up all those who are working at this time, who are having to leave their homes and go out and work for us. We pray especially for the doctors and nurses working in our hospitals especially those caring for people with the virus. Give them courage and strength and protect them, Lord, that they can care really well and bring great compassion and healing to people in hospital. We pray also for those working in our shops to bring us food and our delivery men and our bus drivers and anyone, Lord, who is working at this time out there so that we can be at home and stay safe. We thank you for them, Lord. Give them courage and strength and protection. And we pray for those who have not got work at this time and who are worried about money. Please, Lord, give them peace and protection and provide money for them in amazing ways, just like the coin in the fish. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Okay, so that's something to try at home. Maybe as a family, you could just turn over a card every now and again and pray for whichever thing pops up and keep the prayer going because prayer is our powerful weapon at this time. Right, so that's it for this week. I hope you can do the quiz and find out the coins and how many coins. I hope you can get creative, perhaps with the camera. The best way to send me a little clip is actually um, over WhatsApp. So I know you're not old enough to have WhatsApp, but if you've made a little clip on a phone or an iPad, perhaps a parent could WhatsApp it to me um, and we can use it next week. That's the craft. And um, yeah, God bless you all. We'll play out with another worship song and I'll see you next week. Bye. Great love My God made a way for me